book you just won relates directly to our topic, Complex Event Processing Queries on Speed. So go ahead. That was not time. Oh, it's not? No. Nope. Morning. I just talked about complex event processing, but I'm not going to talk about it, not for a few slides anyway. I want to take a step back, I want to get away from the buzzword, I want to talk about um, relationships and how people, and especially programmers, look at data. So when you're a child, you know there's a recent father in here, when you're a child and somebody holds up a ball and they say this is a ball, you think, okay, this is a ball, that's how you relate to that data. You see your mom, hey, that's my mom, I see her every day. Um, when we grow up, we still do sort of the same thing, right? You see these pictures? Where would you be if you saw those th three things at once? A wedding. You're relating the data. You see a tuxedo. Oh, okay, that's a clue. You see something else. That's another clue. As programmers, how do we do that? Oh, we do this. An ugly schema, right? Maybe only a DBA understands it. What I love about this one, too, is it says it's simplified. Wow, that's simplified. <laughs> Outstanding. So now that we have this complex data relationship, what do we do? We pay Oracle lots of money, and we stuff it all in a database, and then we try and query the crap out of it. And that DBA calls you up and goes, hey, you can't do that select star from star query. That's not going to work. <laughs> right? Complex event processing flips that model on its head. What we do is we store the query, and then we take the data, and we run the data through that. Lots of data, really fast, run it against our query. It's sort of a little bit of a paradigm shift. Um, and it's not, it's not great to everything. You'll see that here <clears throat> in just a second. This might be your typical database scenario, right? Lots of data coming into the database. You're trying to query it. Somebody else is querying it. It's an ugly mess. Maybe you're only interested in the gold car, or maybe you're only interested in the, in the cargo truck. What you really want is this, right? You want fast data running against your queries. You want to know right away when data matches what you're interested in. If you're a business person, if you're a data analyst, if you're just looking for a deal on a website. We'll see that in a second. Here's a quote from one of Google's founders, right? They want to index real-time search. They want real-time searches, and they want to index real-time results. The real-time web is coming. You've all seen it. Twitter, now you can enable that on the top of your search when you look at Google, Facebook, same thing. Hubsub, hubbub, funny name, cool idea. They're trying to push RSS and Atom syndication feeds instead of you pulling them. The idea is to get it closer to real-time. So you can alert people when you post a new blog or when something happens. Here's the deals. One of my favorite websites of all time, slickdeals.net. I put a bunch of keywords in there, PlayStation, Onkyo, you can tell what I got for Christmas, right? Um, whenever somebody posts a deal on one of these items, I get notified through an email. It's almost real time. Now the disadvantage to this, we lose the historical aspect. But chances are, you're already databasing all your data anyway. You're already streaming it into a database. Why not tap into that and run a complex event processor and have those queries actively go against your data? Here's what they kind of look like. It's not that far from SQL queries or SQL-like language. You see a select statement in there. You see a stock tick event, uh, a where symbol within a timer. OK, that's easy. This one, yeah, not so much, right? We have a lot of different transactions going on here. The idea with this slide is, look, it can be simple or it can be complex. There's a learning curve like everything else. There's a link on there in the bottom that explains that one in a little more detail. How fast can we query? Let's get back to the title of this presentation, Queries on Speed. 500,000 events per second on a dual CPU, 2 gigahertz box, with 1,000 queries running against that from 2007. That's like running on this laptop right here. Big things come in small packages. Hydrogen bombs. In Lowry, there's an air museum. This hydrogen bomb is about 15 feet long. Okay, that's bigger than me, but that's a hydrogen bomb. It's only 15 feet long. <laughs> what can you do with this? Competitive advantage. As you read this slide, this might be illegal. So no, you know, don't blame me if you go try it. Goldman Sachs is doing high-frequency trading where they're reacting to market trades in less than a third of a second. They're using these kinds of technologies to do this real-time processing. If you want to learn more, we just gave away one book. It's Event Processing in Action on the left there. 
Um, the other book, Open Source SOA, has one chapter on Esper, um, which is the technology that we've used at work. Um, these are all credits for pictures. But we're also giving away one more of those Manning books, and Esper was kind enough to give us a $50 Amazon gift certificate, ideally so you could buy a book about complex event processing. But if you want a PlayStation like I got for Christmas, feel free. Thank you.